Hello students, welcome to the lecture on international business environment and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the international marketing environment, discuss the micro environment, define the macro environment, explain political legal environment. Let's start with a brief introduction to the topic international business environment. International business means carrying on business activities beyond national boundaries. These activities normally include transaction of economic resources such as goods, capital, services comprising technology, skilled labor and transportation etc. International production. Thus, international business includes not only international trade of goods and services but also foreign investment especially foreign direct investment. Objectives of international business Sales expansion The main objective of international business is to increase the sale because in international business a firm can sell its product in domestic as well as in foreign market. Resource acquisition It means getting the resources from other countries because there may be so many resources of other country which may not be available in home country. Minimize competitive risk. Many companies move internationally to minimize the risk of competitors. Diversification. Many companies want to diversify the sources of sales and supplies so they may seek foreign market for this purpose. Modes of international business. A firm adopts various modes for its entry into business transaction across borders, direct and indirect export. Trade mode presents the first step in international business. It includes export and import. Export may be either direct or indirect. Direct export. In case of direct export, a company takes full responsibility for making its goods available in the target market by selling directly to the end users normally through its own agents. Indirect export When the exporting company does not possess the necessary infrastructure to involve itself in direct exporting, indirect export takes place. Counter trade Counter trade is a sort of bilateral trade where one set of goods is exchanged for another set of goods. In this type of external trade, a seller provides a buyer with the delivers and contractually agrees to purchase goods from the buyer equal to the agreed percentage of the original sale contract value. Contractual entry modes. Contractual entry modes are found in case of intangible products such as technology, patents and so on. Forms of technical collaboration. Technical collaboration normally takes four forms. They are licensing. Licensing is an arrangement by which a firm transfers its intangible property such as expertise, know-how, blueprints, technology and manufacturing design to its own unit or to a firm located abroad. Franchising. In this form of technical collaboration, the franchiser is the entrant and the franchisee is the host country entity. The franchisee makes use of intellectual property right like trademarks, copyrights, business know-how, managerial assistance, etc. Management contracts. In a management contract, one company supplies the other with managerial expertise. Such agreements are normally signed in case of turnkey projects where the host country firm is not able to manage day-to-day -day affairs of the project or in other cases where the desired managerial capabilities are not available in the host country. Turnkey projects In a turnkey project agreement, a firm agrees to construct an entire plant in a foreign country and makes it fully operational. It is known as turnkey because the licensor starts the operation and hands over the key of the operating plant to the licensee. 
foreign investment. Foreign investment takes two forms. One is foreign portfolio investment, the other is foreign direct investment. International marketing environment. The marketing environment creates opportunities or threats in two basic ways. First, changes in the marketing environment can directly affect specific markets. Changes in the marketing environment can make markets larger or smaller or sometimes create new markets. The second way, the marketing environment produces opportunities or threats is through direct influences on specific marketing activities. Changes in the technological environment similarly provide opportunities to produce these high mileage or alternative fuel cars. These different levels of marketing can be expressed in the following terms. Domestic marketing, which involves the company manipulating a series of controllable variables such as price, advertising, distribution and the product service attributes in a largely uncontrollable external environment that is made up of different economic structures, competitors, cultural values and legal infrastructure within specific political or geographic country boundaries. International marketing, which involves operating across a number of foreign country markets in which not only do the uncontrollable variables differ significantly between one market and another, but the controllable factors in the form of cost and price structures, opportunities for advertising and distributive infrastructure are also likely to differ significantly. Global marketing management, which is a larger and more complex international operation. Welcome to the London School of Business and Finance. My name is David Shaw and I'm Senior Lecturer here and I teach Global Marketing. I spent 25 years in the global marketing business, travelling the world, buying and selling, meeting people from all parts. What I'd like to do today is to get you to think about what global marketing actually encompasses. There's a good saying here, the world is your oyster, but do you do seafood? Well, what does that mean? I mean, yes, we all know what's inside an oyster, but the ocean is much bigger. There are many fish in the ocean, and many fish are still not discovered. There is so much to learn. The world market is an ocean, much of which is not well understood, just as, is, just as are the oceans of the world. What we try to do with global marketing as a subject here is to have very clear outcomes of, of things that we expect you students to be able to achieve. One of the major outcomes will be your ability to recognise the challenge to global marketing, what is stopping it, what's making it happen, what's making it not happen, and then training you to think logically, to, to develop tactics and strategies, tactics, short-term actions, strategies, longer-term plans, to get your product and services into different markets around the world. The other major outcome is really to look at the application of competitive advantage. Competitive advantage is something all products, all brands, all companies dream of having, whether it's a, a, a better iPhone, a better smartphone, whether it's a better tasting product, whether it's a better fitting clothes, more fashionable, we're always trying to be better than our competitors. The need to identify what can give you a competitive advantage is a critical part of the marketing thought processes. We also need to see whether the products and services that we have on offer are suitable to be, to be marketed as a standardised product or indeed do we need to adapt it to local tastes. There's so much to learn in marketing and of course the major problem that's facing us all is the fact that the world is changing all the time. There is no such thing as a plan that can be used through time in all countries. Clever marketers are thinking, analysing the whole time and coming up with new approaches. What are the factors that are actually driving uh, the globalisation of the world and particularly the factors affecting global marketing? 
Probably one of the major drivers has been the increased flow of information. They reckon that uh, data and information doubles every two years. We have an exponential amount of information for us to assimilate and to try and deal with and analyse and study before we make decisions. Big part of global marketing, understanding the information flowing in. Certainly, as a world, we ha have all become more aware of one another through the growth of international media, television, films, you name it. We can see virtually anything via satellite TV. We have all become knowledge heavy. The spread of technology, the internet, the, uh, the, the use of broadband and hopefully soon super high speed broadband enables us to communicate very, very quickly right across the planet. I can remember the days in my career when we only had a telephone and fax machine. We now are able to send high definition pictures at an instant across the entire globe and further. The original marketeers of the 1940s and 50s who came out of America believed big was beautiful. Everything was about economies of scale, standardised product. More and more people's tastes are changing quickly, people's fashions are moving on and we're having to produce products in smaller batches. Another great driver has been the reduction of global trade barriers, protectionism. The 1930s depression was caused almost entirely as a result of defensive behaviour by countries. The World Trade Organisation has now virtually opened the world up completely. Certainly what we are beginning to see in, in the world is the growth of what I call trading blocks. North America, South America, Central America are all uh, aligned with one another and allow free movement of goods and to some degree people. The EU, originally founded between Germany and France in the 1950s, has spread right across Europe, encompassing many Eastern European countries. Europe so ravaged by war. In fact, I believe probably those two wars held the whole world back for 20 to 30 years. Now, thankfully, enjoys relative peace. We now trade with each other. We are all friends. Our only times were enemies, probably on the football pitch. The Evolution also within markets of more and more clearly defined and smaller segments as we describe them. Certainly in a town, in a city like London, we see huge numbers of people from all over the globe. You can eat in virtually any type of restaurant in London. There's something like 200 nationalities living in this capital city, all of them requiring their own products and services. Global travel, the widespread Use of the internet, the widespread dissemination of information has created global market segments like there have never been before. On the other side of the equation, there are factors that are stopping globalisation. Certainly tastes and culture, local taste, local culture. Maybe religion uh, prohibits the sale of products in one country compared to another country. We are all victims of culture where we were brought up, where we were schooled, our parents, religion, politics, have all made us into the people we are today. We as global marketers have to understand these drivers of culture. Markets vary dramatically, and uh, the conditions in markets vary. In some countries there's high unemployment and low growth. In other countries there is high growth and low unemployment. We have to understand what's happening inside economies. Global marketing is also about having a good understanding of global economics. The large multinational corporation, the large pan-national company, is everywhere. But people working in those com companies are all very different in different countries. And managing, com and managing companies can be quite culturally difficult. Some companies, some organisations have what's known as management myopia. Management myopia means being short-sighted, not seeing clearly into the distance, not seeing what's about to happen, looking to the future, looking at trends. Global marketing is about looking and seeing. Another factor against globalisation is the increasing development of the pressure group. In the Western world, the anti-capitalists are very opposed to consumption. But without consumption, there would be no jobs, there would be no growth there would be no nice things, the things that you and I enjoy in our lives. We have a lot to thank global marketing for. 
When we examine any market in any country, there are always four major forces at work. These are political forces, technological forces, socio-cultural forces and economic forces. The political and legal system can make trade difficult or easy in countries. There are different laws, different trade regulations. You have to do your research before you enter a market. Technology, standards of education, technology transfer, levels of training that people have received all vary. Again, an area for deep marketing research before we enter these markets. And of course, again, socio-cultural factors. One of the world's major problems is the ageing Western population, the ageing populations of, of, of China, of America, of Japan. Language itself can also be a problem. The economic situation also varies from country to country. Some countries are, are well developed, like the UK, uh, with high growth rates. The UK, once the seat of the Industrial Revolution, is now no longer the driving dynamo of the world economy as it once was. We see the transfer of business to what we call the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, an understanding of what is driving business in those countries, how they see their business and how they see us as customers is always the key perspective required. And of course, currency exchange rates. There's just so many forces to look at, but these four forces we look at in detail. Now, the global marketing mix varies uh, in different countries. Uh, in some countries, you can sell standardised products. In other countries, they need adapting. Standardised products such as Coca-Cola, such as McDonald's, well, even they vary slightly, but they're probably the closest, the Nike trainer. Anything that varies with the Nike trainer might be the size. But in, in things like food, uh, banking, uh, there are a whole host of other uh, products and services that require adaption to fit in with the local market's requirements whether it's Islamic banking compared to Western banking, all of these things we look at. And we're particularly interested in understanding how people perceive our products and our services in their market. Entering a new market can be very risky. It can go from one end, where you simply just export merchandise to that country, to the other extreme, where we open a factory or we open a subsidiary and directly operate it. There are many stages in market entry from uh, exporting using distributors and agents through cooperative ventures, joint strategies. We have to consider the safest and most logical way. Again, we study in depth market entry strategies, so vital if our product and services is to have a good long life and profitable existence in any other country. We expect you to be able to read, analyse, and what we mostly want is for you to be interested in what's happening in the world. An understanding of what goes on about you is mission critical for any form of business success. Global marketers are no exception. In today's hyper-competitive world, only those who really care and only the best will survive. I look forward to seeing you. Goodbye. Micro-environment. Micro-environment factors are close to businesses and have direct impact on its business operations and success. Before deciding corporate strategy, businesses should carry out a full analysis of their micro-environment. Micro-economic factors. Customers. As all businesses need customers, they should be centered, orientated around customers. The firm's marketing plan should aim to attract and retain customers through products that meets their wants and needs and excellent customer service. There's a great tool that I think is one of the best business tools out there called the SWOTS analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. A good marketeer will take a look at all of those. Strengths and weaknesses focus on the organization. Are we good at manufacturing? Do we have capital available for expansion? Those could be some strengths. Maybe we have an existing market position. Weaknesses could be we have very strong competition. 
weaknesses could be, we don't have the money we need to expand. Opportunities and threat take a look at the outside environment and how that could affect our business. An opportunity might be that there is a need for our product and service because it's low price. A threat might be because of the economic situations, people can't afford our luxury cars anymore. So good marketers take a look at both the external and internal environment. Employees. Employing staff with relevant skills and experience is essential. This process begins at recruitment stage and continues throughout an employee's employment via ongoing training and promotion opportunities. Training and development play a critical role in achieving a competitive edge, especially in service sector marketing. Suppliers. Suppliers provide businesses with the materials they need to carry out their business activities. A supplier's behavior will directly impact the business it supplies. Shareholders. As organizations require investment to grow, they may decide to raise money by floating on the stock market, that is, move from private to public ownership. Media. Positive media attention can make an organization or its products and negative media attention can break an organization. Organizations need to manage the media so that the media help promote the positive things about the organization. Competitors. The name of the game in marketing is differentiation. If a business is unaware of its competitors' activities, they will find it very difficult to beat their competitors. Macro environment. A macro environment comprises the external factors that can influence a business. These factors typically include economic, demographic, political and technological forces in business. Macro environment factors. General economic factors in the macro environment can include supply and demand, number of competitors in the market, availability of economic resources and efficient production methods employed by companies. These factors are uncontrollable external forces that affect how a business operates. Analysts often categorize them using the acronyms PEST or PESTEL. Broken down, PEST stands for political, economic, social and technological concerns. PESTEL also includes environmental and legal factors. Every marketing person makes, needs to take into consideration the marketing environment in which they're operating in. That environment has two components, the internal and the external environment. We call those the internal or micro environment and the external, the macro environment. I'm going to talk about two basic tools you can use to help identify those. The first is for the macro environment, and that is called a pestle analysis. You look at the political situation, the economic situation, the social situation in the market, the technological situation in the market, the legal situation, and then the ecological situation. Let me briefly touch on a couple of those. Political. If you're in a part of the world that there's political instability, that might cause some pro problems for you as a marketeer. There also may be pressure for legislation proposed by politicians that could affect your ability to market a product or service. Economically, the recent events of the past have showed that there can be major financial changes in our world. So you need to take into consideration potential problems you might have with economics. Socially, sometimes a product that works in the Western world may not work in a place like the Middle East, so you need to take that into consideration. Technologically, do you have the right technology for the marketplace at the right time? Can te technology help you or can it hinder you? Then there's the legal ramifications, and the legal ramifications can be legislation, they can be threat of lawsuit, a number of things. And more and more today, the world is becoming green. So we have to take into account the ecology 
and produce products and services that are friendly to the environment. That's a look at the macro environment. Political. Political macro environment factors include things like tax policies, government issued safety regulations, the availability of government contracts, and even shifts in the controlling political party. Economic. Economic factors are often difficult to assess since economic forecasts and analysis vary widely between experts. Unemployment levels, comparative foreign exchange rates, and the state of the global economy can all help or hurt a business's ability to get needed components and maintain a stable profit. Social. The mood and demographics of the population make up the social area of macro environment factors. Social trends such as a preference for on-demand mobile media devices can also influence which products a company manufactures and where it chooses to spend advertising dollars. Technological. Technological macro environment factors can influence how an organization does business. Owners must be able to accurately identify which new developments will be truly useful and which are just fads. Environmental. Environmental concerns are important to businesses both in the short and long term. Programs such as environmental risk assessment can help companies prepare to handle many of the most likely short-term crises. Legal. Legal factors can limit or change how a business operates. Legal factors are determined by both local legislation and regional and national laws. Hedging against the macro environment. Generally, businesses have little to no control over their macro environment. They can, however, prepare for the unexpected by using a pest or pestle analysis. Business environment types. The political legal environment. It encompasses factors and trends related to governmental activities and specific laws and regulations that affect marketing practice. It is closely tied to the social and economic environments. Organizations must deal with laws at the international, federal, state and local levels. Demographic environment. The demographic environment refers to the size, distribution and growth rate of groups of people with different characteristics. A global perspective requires that marketers be familiar with important demographic trends around the world as well as within the United States. Social environment. The social environment includes all factors and trends related to groups of people including their number, characteristics, behavior and growth projections. Cultural environment. The cultural environment refers to factors and trends related to how people live and behave. Cultural factors including the values, ideas, attitudes, beliefs and activities of specific population subgroups greatly affect consumers' purchasing behavior. Cultural differences are important in both international and domestic markets. Economic environment. The economic environment includes factors and trends related to income levels and the production of goods and services. Technological environment. The technological environment includes factors and trends related to innovations that affect the development of new products or the marketing process. Competitive environment. The competitive environment consists of all the organizations that attempt to serve similar customers. Two types of competitors are of major concern. Brand competitors, product competitors. Institutional environment. The institutional environment consists of all the organizations involved in marketing products and services. Summary. Now in the end, 
let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. International business means carrying on business activities beyond national boundaries. Changes in the marketing environment can make markets larger or smaller or sometimes create new markets. The international marketing environment is a complex constellation of demands and constraints which the firm faces as it attempts to compete and grow. Micro environment factors are factors close to a business that have a direct impact on its business operations and success. A macro environment comprises the external factors that can influence a business.